Hey there, bring a trailer bidders. My name is Eric Delary. I am the owner and founder of PSF Motorsports here in Kennewick, Washington. Um, I wanted to take just a couple minutes to address a couple of the comments that I saw uh, pop up. I believe it was yesterday. Um, I've actually taken the time to reach out to Dan Weiser. So big thanks to Dan for taking the time to talk with me. Um, I gave him a call just to see uh, what he had for feedback in terms of the comments he left. Um, I appreciate a little bit more insight. So to address a couple of those things, um, you are bidding or looking at a 1995 FZJ80 Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, I did find it at an auction from a dealership that I have purchased from in the past as well. Uh, they are also located in the state of Washington. Um, I have passed along all of the title paperwork to bring a trailer, so they have seen it as well. Um, the Carfax is clean, the title is clean, um, and for the most part, uh, one owner owned this vehicle for a very long period of time uh, in the state of California. Prior to that, there was a corporate owner who uh, ran it for uh, a few years in Tennessee and then brought it to California. Uh, that said, it is still a 1995 uh, Toyota FZJ80 Land Cruiser um, with 256,007 miles on it, I think as of today, exactly. Um, I don't know the entire history of the vehicle. It's hard to plug and play those pieces uh, without doing a lot of research. And even when you do a lot of research, you know, things aren't always documented. You can only find so much. So it does seem that this vehicle was offered for auction uh, back in uh, 2021. And again in 2022, uh, reported no miles at the time uh, in between those auctions. I don't know where it was in between there. I have the paperwork and I actually have Dan's name. Uh, Dan Weiser was the commenter. Uh, Weiser Motors up in Linden, Washington uh, is apparently somebody who purchased it at one point. In my paperwork trail, it goes from Dan to another dealer and then to me. Uh, I don't see any record of Copart. Uh, he did, did make a mention of that in the comments. So whether or not it went through there, you know, I'm not positive. Um, he actually, the way he kind of said it was, he kind of took a look at it and decided they were going to get rid of it. Dan is a huge collector and a big uh, fella in the FJ80 world. Um, it's something that he knows a lot about. Now, a little bit of background on me, big off-road enthusiast, uh, big sports car enthusiast, as you can kind of see behind me. Um, I like to modify things. And a lot of what I go for at the auction is things that I like, that I'm into, that I understand, um, and that I like to build. So Jeeps, uh, a lot of Toyota Tacomas, um, Toyota FJs, some of the newer ones, um, but a lot of different Jeep vehicles, Toyota 86, Subarus, um, really anything that I kind of have a history with or a passion for. Now, the FJ80 always thought it was an awesome vehicle. However, fellas like Dan uh, know the ins and outs of the VIN numbers, uh, the, you know, the different... Uh, features and options that were on different models at different years. I know enough that I know what to look for, um, but I wouldn't call myself like a big FJ80 enthusiast. There are There's so much to dive deep into, and I just, I don't have that vast knowledge. What I do know um, is that they're very capable rigs, is that if you can find one that's in really nice shape, um, you know, they can make a really good platform. And if you look at the listing on my website at psfmotorsports.com, one of the things you'll very specifically see is what I detailed in there. And so things like, you know, some of the minor things that may need to be looked at are the brakes at some point as they're a little soft. Um, I occasionally get kind of this little squeak in the steering wheel when you're turning in and it's only occasionally, it may just be one of the greasable joints, something like that. Um, and then little things like the head units missing, uh, that a CD player was put in it at some point, the head unit for that CD player is missing. Um, so you may need a new stereo in it. Uh, somebody replaced the center console armrest, which makes sense, you know, 256,000 miles and 28 years old. Eventually you get a little wear and tear. I have a 2005 Dodge that has a hole worn in the uh, armrest. So that's been replaced. It's gray instead of the kind of the beige interior that's in there. That's pictured so you can see it. Um, the driver's seat has been replaced by another driver's seat. It may be potentially even out of a newer Land Cruiser or something like that. The tan matches fairly well. It's a really nice seat. It's not the original seat. And then there's some normal wear and tear on the others. By no mean is the interior destroyed. 
Um, so there was a couple of things. I'm just gonna pull them up here real quick so I can make sure that I'm addressing them. And again, I appreciate Dan taking the time to talk with me because him and I did discuss a little bit of this. Um, some things that popped up pretty much right away in the comments after Dan posted this was that, um, I think one of the most recent people said that, you know, the engine is toast, uh, blew the motor in the trans, nothing is blown. And I'm going to take you for a ride here in a minute so you can see, uh, what Dan said is, is that if it hasn't had the head gasket replaced by 180,000 miles, um, that it usually needs it or the motor, you know, isn't going to run as well as it should. Um, I don't know that the uh, head gasket hasn't been replaced. It quite possibly could have. And if it's got 256,000 on it, there's a good chance that it has been replaced. Now, what we did do and what is noted in the listing is we compression tested all the cylinders. All of those compression tested just fine. Um, it wasn't running great, but as noted, uh, those auctions over those two years in 2021 and 2022, uh, the mileage didn't change between reporting and when I got it. So if the gas sat in the motor for a little while, which the gas in the tank was very low at the time, if that's still the same gas, then it's not gonna be great, it's old. We got rid of that gas, we put new gas in it, and we noticed that the uh, number five cylinder was misfiring a little bit when we looked at it. We pulled the plugs, that plug was the worst of the six. Um, we replaced all six spark plugs, we replaced all the wires, we replaced the distributor cap, um, and the thing ran awesome after that. So no issues with any of the firing whatsoever. Um, what I will say is that the thermostat housing was cracked, and so there was a little bit of a leak there, and that was pretty obvious right off the bat. So uh, thermostat housing was replaced, as was the thermostat. Obviously that got a new gasket when we put it back on, new hose clamp, hoses. Um, and we replaced a couple other hoses in the back that were cracked as well. So all of that stuff's been taken care of. Uh, the thing fires right up and runs great. Now, the brakes, like I said, brakes are a little soft. It still goes down the road and stops and all that. There's an ABS light on and you can see that in the video um, that I shot that is on the listing. Um, you can also see that there's an airbag light. Those are two pretty minor things. Um, May it need brakes? I mean, potentially at some point, if this is gonna be your daily driver or a regular vehicle that you want for the road, there's probably some things that you're gonna to need to do to make sure that it is exactly the way you want it. Um, again, 256,000, seven miles on it at this point, and it's 28 years old. Um, for the value of it, you know, if it was something that I went through and restored, it'd probably have a reserve on it. It would be much higher priced, um, but no reserve. And uh, really, I saw something that I thought came up at the auction that looked really cool, was in decent shape, um, and it's a California truck. So again, as someone from the East Coast, I look at something like this and think, man, that would be rotted back East. It looks amazing here. There's no rust in it. There's nothing. There's no holes in it. It is really clean in terms of the entire foundation. And so... As I mentioned, one of the things that you will see if you go to my website, psfmotorsports.com, um, I wrote a, I wrote an overview of the vehicle that's very similar to, I mean, it's exactly what I sent on to bring a trailer. They kind of wordsmith that and do their thing with it. And so they have a slightly different version of that. Um, but all the details are there. And one of the things that I say is this is a great platform to begin a full restoration or off-road overland build. Uh, there is absolutely zero rust, um, and the underside has never been undercoated as far as I can see. I think there's a couple of things here and there, like with the uh, uh, the black near the bumper on the uh, receiver hitch. That may have been uh, painted sometime, but as far as like thick undercoating, that's never been done. It's a very clean underside. Um, it looks like it's in really nice shape. So this is a great foundation for somebody that wants to do that. I'm into modifying things, building things, Jeeps, trucks, Tacomas cars, whatever it is, um, but I'm not in the business of restoration, uh, nor do I want to be. So I didn't restore this vehicle, and it's not something I'm interested in restoring, but you may be really into 80 series, and it may be the perfect opportunity for you to buy something that's a little bit less expensive than some of the high-priced FJ80 series um, with all the features that it has on it. Um, now, the axles are something I'm going to look a little bit more into. So it does have the switch to turn the electric diff lock into, it's got two settings. The first is the rear lock, and then you turn it the second way, and it goes to front and rear lock. Now, on the 95, 
my understanding is, and Dan confirmed as well, um, there's no switch for the center diff. You can put a switch in and you can buy a factory switch. Um, and there's actually a space in the dash where you can pop out a plug, you can put in the new factory switch, and then there should be a harness right behind it where you can plug it in. And then what that allows you to do is lock the center diff while it's in four high. Now this is an all wheel drive vehicle, so it's always in four high. Uh, which is why when you shift it into four low on a 95, uh, it locks the center differential automatically. Um, and then you can, with the, the electric switch, lock the front and then, uh, excuse me, lock the rear and then the front and rear diffs. Um, I didn't play with that a lot ahead of time. I saw that it had it in it. I saw that when you switched it over, it lights up. Um, I didn't play around with that stuff a lot. Neither did Dan. Dan had his mechanic take a look at this. Uh, Dan told me he wasn't, you know, mechanically inclined. He's not a mechanic. He just really likes the 80 series and he knows, he knows a lot about them. He has a ton of knowledge. Um, so by all means, if you have questions on your 80 series, look up Dan at Wiser Motors. Um, and I'm sure he can help you out a little bit with some of those things or we'd be happy to talk FJ80s with you. Um, what he said is that these axles at some point were swapped out. The VIN code, uh, all of the codes on it are matching to be the code that would be a locking differential truck and it has the switch on it, that's never changed. What he says is that the axles have been removed from it. Looking at it myself and with the history of the previous owners, I don't know where in line somebody would have yanked the previous locking axles out of it and then put the exact same axles, less the lockers, into it. Um, it, it isn't engaging, that's true. I can't see where there would necessarily be a spot for the electric locker, noting that it is an electric locker. Um, so I can't guarantee that. I don't know for sure that those axles have the lockers in them anymore without tearing them down and looking into them. They are, however, FJ80 series axles with all of the factory brackets, with all of the factory positions on them. Um, and I'll show you the underside because I've taken a thorough look at it to see. I don't see where uh, there would be a difference in wear between maybe the link bars and the springs and the axle itself, it's really, they look like they've been in there and they haven't gone anywhere. Um, it's hard for me to see that those have actually been pulled out and gone with something else. So is there a wire cut and those are, the, the, the lockers aren't engaging? I guess that's a possibility. Is it possible that they don't have the electric lockers in these axles and they've been swapped in from another FJ? I guess that's a possibility as well. I am not the expert on that in particular, I will say, however, though, that this FJ80 has the VIN number that reflects a triple locked 95 FZJ80, uh, and it does still have the, the switch in it. So I'm just going to repeat it one more time. Um, this is just a really cool, clean rig. I really liked it. I thought it was something that, you know, the people would appreciate that like FJ Cruisers and it may be a better entry point to doing some of those things for you than a twenty-five or $30,000 uh, bone stock 95 uh, FJ80 or you know whatever year in the FJ80 series. Um, again, as somebody who has no problem tearing the axles out of a Jeep and putting one ton axles into it or doing LS swaps in vehicles, I'm a big fan of putting new things in rigs and updating them and making them really capable. I know that the FJ80 right out of the box was a very capable rig, um, but to me, this one has a ton of potential. So it's a really cool rig. Um, the interior, that was one of the other things, and I'll just pull this up here real quick. Dan mentioned, I believe, that the interior was just kind of a mess. Um, you know, again, it's an older vehicle, so let's see. He said, yeah, the, the interior was in very poor condition. Um, he was just disappointed in this in this cruiser. You know, if you're a collector of FJ80s, then by all means, this may not be, you know, the cream of the crop for you. You may have much nicer ones. And based on some of the stuff I've seen on Dan's website, he does have very nice FJ80s. So maybe this just wasn't for him. However, uh, we went through and shampooed the entire interior. Again, a 28-year-old vehicle at 256,000 miles it's gonna have dirt and grime, it's gonna have some of those things. It's very well cleaned up. You can see it in all the pictures. As a matter of fact, what you will notice in some of the pictures I took 
is that we had the heat of the sun kind of shining down on us that day and I had finished uh, shampooing it the day prior. The carpets weren't fully dry, uh, so the uh, the moisture from in there and the heat from the sun kind of created a little bit of a uh, uh, condensation on the windows. I'll show you that that's not the case anymore. There's not like permanent condensation or anything like that, but uh, that's from actually shampooing the entire interior, cleaning it up. Um, there's nothing else falling off. There's no problems with the interior other than exactly what's been noted. There's no head unit. Uh, the uh, center armrest has been changed over to a gray one without any holes in it. And there's normal wear and tear that you'd find on a 28 year old vehicle with 256,000 miles. So um, again, really cool unit. Uh, the big thing that I also forgot to address um, other than, you know, no head gasket blown as far as I can tell, the motor runs great. The transmission was very low on fluid when I got it. Um, Dan said when he tried to move it, it wouldn't move at all. I'm not sure I wasn't there. So I don't know what that means in that regard. Um, I don't, I wasn't there. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And I told him the same thing. Um, but as far as it moving for me, I drove it onto a trailer at an incline. I've driven it down the highway at 60 miles an hour. Um, I'm going to take you guys for a ride in it uh, here shortly. Um, but the transmission works. Um, does it need to be serviced? Potentially. It's got 256,000 miles on it. So uh, potentially an oil change, a filter change in the transmission uh, would be a big help with that. Um, is there something that needs to be serviced that's bigger than that? It, it could be, you know, again, it's a quarter million mile Toyota Land Cruiser um, that's 28 years old. So there may be some other things. And, and obviously that's why it's at no reserve. That's why these things have been uh, put up on the website as well. They're transparent on my website. I think bring a trailer in the way that they narrated it from uh, my website as well. Um, does a good job at saying that, you know, there's some imperfections here and there. These are, there's things that will need to be taken care of. So, um, full transparency, uh, that's what I'm all about. That's what I try to do in posting this again. That's why it's at no reserve. Uh, there's some things maybe here and there that need to be taken care of. I appreciate Dan, uh, reaching out and letting us know a little more of the history of it. Um, because I had no idea that, you know, this went on in between there, when you get a paperwork trail and you look some of these things up, you don't know the reasons why it was passed along or why someone didn't want it. And again, because Dan is really into some very nice FJ80s, this may just have been one that he didn't want to deal with and he passed on it. So again, I don't see a Copart uh, sale anywhere in here. It's not in any of my paperwork and doesn't appear to be. Um, I do have his name on paperwork and it, in my paperwork stack, it looks like it goes from Dan to another dealer and that dealer is who I purchased it from. And so that's the paperwork trail. Uh, it's a clean title. It's not a salvage title. It's a, a nice unit and it could use a great home. It could use somebody who's passionate about the FJ80 and uh, somebody who really wants to take this thing to the next level and build it out the way they want it. This is that opportunity to do it again without probably a $30,000 price tag. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can contact me directly through the site. My phone number is on my website, psfmotorsports.com. You can call me anytime. You can ask me questions. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I am happy to discuss it with you. Uh, wish you guys all the best. Happy bidding. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Uh, so as you can see, it is cold. Um, I wanted to give you guys right from the start. So check out the dash. Right now it does have 256,009 miles on it. Um, let's uh, give this a start. Fires right up. As I mentioned, the ABS light's flashing. There is an airbag light on. You see that in the previous video that I recorded with this. But, uh, shift it into gear. You can hear the engine engage, it shift right into drive and it goes forward. Great. First shift and we're going to come to a stop here anyways. Signals work, lights work, all of those things. We're going to come to a stop. I'll hit the brakes a little harder. Brakes work. Um, again, are the brakes off? Uh, yeah, they probably they probably need some work at some point, um, but the brakes are 
you know. Uh, yeah, they're a little soft. They've been used. It's a 256,000 mile vehicle, so um, you know it's kind of bound to happen at some point. You might need to replace some brakes or pads. Um, come to a stop again. Turn signal. We will take this up the road, and uh, like I said, I just want to show you that it runs and drives. Um, it does a good job. Uh, firing right up, uh, running well. It doesn't overheat. It's shifting fine. Um, I mentioned in the video that I recorded as well that, uh, you know, maybe the transmission fluid being fully changed and a new, uh, a new transmission filter, that might help the transmission a little. Does it feel like it's lagging a little bit? I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not shifting super hard. Uh, it could, it, you know, it's 256,000 miles. So the transmission may need to be serviced and, you know, there's always a chance that something like that needs to be replaced. Um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about this as well while we're driving, but, uh, the head gasket, in our opinion, I had a mechanic look at it. I looked at it. I, I don't think that there's any issue with the head gasket whatsoever. Um, it has been, it, it, it could have been serviced. I, we're not positive. It's not anything I'm aware of. I know that, uh, Dan in our comment section mentioned, uh, to me when we spoke that if it wasn't serviced by 180,000 miles, uh, usually that created an issue. This has 256 on it. So the chances that, you know, 70,000 miles ago, 80,000 miles ago, almost, uh, it was serviced. I mean, it, it's a pretty good possibility. Um, like I've said, what we did find was thermostat housing was cracked. So it got a new thermostat, thermostat housing. Uh, it needed new plugs cause it was running a little rough when we got it. Um, I wasn't sure when I got it, how long it had sat because my paperwork doesn't show that. It shows a clean title. Um, so, uh, you know, it makes sense that, uh, based on some of the comments that were shared that potentially, you know, it was, it was sitting for a couple of years. Uh, the gas was very low in it at the time. Um, so that would be a good reason why it was running rough as well. We immediately thought, man, the gas has some water in it. Uh, just based on the smoke color that came out. We drained the tank, we filled it with new stuff, um, or at least we put, you know, I think I put at least five, six gallons in it, something like that. Um, and then we changed the plugs, the wires, and the distributor cap, and it ran great after that. So um, it's been running really well since. Let's get on the highway here. Get the gas. It is extremely windy out today, so. Hopefully you're not hearing too much wind noise, but the winds are whipping and there's a uh, tumbleweeds blowing across the road everywhere. So getting up to speed, you'll hear it shift here in a minute. There it goes, shifts just fine. We're running down the road at 65 miles an hour. Our temp gauge is right where it needs to be. This is a no reserve auction. Uh, this is an awesome vehicle in great shape um, without costing you, you know, upwards of $20,000, $30,000. I don't believe it's gonna bring that at auction and I don't expect it to bring that necessarily. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna discourage everyone, uh, anyone if you wanna, you know, bid on it like that, by all means, go for it. But uh, this is a no reserve auction for that reason. This is a 95 uh, Toyota FZJ80 Land Cruiser. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's it's in great shape. It's primarily California owned. It was in Tennessee with an owner uh, as a corporate owner before that. Uh, the Carfax is there for it. Um, I've gone through all of those things. 
Dan mentions in the comments. And again, Dan Weiser, uh, Weiser Motors in Linden, Washington. If you have questions, you know, feel free to give him a call, but he doesn't know what happened between me owning it and him owning it either. So, um, you know, we both kind of talked about that a little bit and potentially there's somebody that's done some things to this to help it out before I got it um, and decided that they didn't want to do it either. Uh, as I, I, I mentioned, um, you know, Dan is a big... Uh, collector of the FJ80 series. Um, he likes it. I got a little speed bump here. So, um, he likes these a lot. Uh, you know, I, I like them a lot, but I'm not a big, you know, collector of them by any means. This is, uh, I think I've owned one other of these in my past and it was a rust box cause I'm from the Northeast and, uh, it wasn't in great shape. So to me, this one is an awesome, uh, California rig. Uh, it's super clean. Uh, there's touches here and there in the interior. Again, I've mentioned those things. Listen to the entire video, look through the photos. There are little things here and there, you know? Like I said, head unit's missing, um, things like that. The seats are a little bit worn. This driver's seat is actually out of something else, so it's in really nice shape, but yeah, it's not the original seat to it. Um, little trim piece missing over here by the mirror. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, the, the rear latch, as, as noted, it doesn't open from the rear, uh, from the exterior, excuse me, um, but it does open from the inside. There's going to be little things you need to do here and there. If you want this to be like your everyday driver to and from work and be reliable and drive hundreds of miles in it or, you know, 12,000 miles a year, whatever the national average is, it's going to probably take you a little bit to make sure that you want to drive this thing every single day all the time. If you're just running around town um, or, like I said, this is a great foundation for a build. You want to turn this into your adventure rig, your off-road rig, uh, or you're really into restoration and want to bring this thing back to its original glory, this is probably a great starting point without spending $30,000 on uh, the base platform. So uh, super nice unit, uh, some things here and there that you'd want to do. Again, really big thanks to Dan for kind of bringing some of that stuff to my attention and filling in the gaps because, you know, paperwork only does so much. You can only find so many things without actually hearing from a previous owner uh, what, what might have gone on with it. So um, really nice rig. If you have questions, like I said, by all means, give us a call. Feel free. Oh, you're, you're going to get a hold of me if you uh, go to psfmotorsports.com. You can reach me at 509-579-6917. Um, I will note here real quick, we'll put it in the park. Uh, there is no button on this. So that was one of the things I mentioned to Dan as well. Um, from my understanding, and I believe Dan agreed with me on this, is that if it's triple locked, which it is, and then the door tag suggests that this always was, uh, there's no button necessarily. This is where the button would go. There's no button to make it triple locked on your own to manually do that. Um, but rather what you do, put this in neutral, you pull this back into four low, and then you would typically see that pop up on the screen. Now I, I you're right. I don't see any light pop up up there for that. So I don't know whether or not it's in, um, it would automatically, be engaged in uh, the center diff. Um, and then over here, this is for, you turn it once, that goes to the rear, turn it twice, and it goes to, let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. It's a little worn out, but uh, you should be able to see. The first notch there says RR for rear, and then the second one is for front and rear. You can see it flashing here on the dash for the lock. It doesn't stay solid. Um, it does appear to be in four low right now. Um, but I couldn't tell you whether or not the center diff is truly locked. And if it's flashing like this, I don't know that the uh, axles are locked. Um, I am not sure whether or not someone actually swapped these out. We're gonna turn that off. I'm gonna put this back in neutral and back in four high. Um, I know that you can buy a factory switch to go into this spot and that behind the dash, there should be um, a plug-in to uh, hitch that factory switch in so that in four high, zoom out here a little bit, in four high, uh, you can hit the switch and, and lock the diff. Um, as uh, Dan said in the comments, I think he's, he thinks that based on his mechanics analysis of this, 
um, that the axles have been swapped out. It, looking underneath it, and again, I'm showing you pictures, I'm sharing that with you. Um, uh, I think it would be a big undertaking to take those axles out. He said to him, those axles are worth ten to $15,000 at least. Um, if they're really worth that to somebody, then maybe they would go through the trouble of doing that. But uh, the possibility is too, is that maybe something is disconnected on those and that the uh, electric locker is just simply isn't working. So I can't guarantee that um, being fully transparent, this is a triple lock coded uh, FZJ80. Um, it's a 95. It has 256,012 miles on it now. Um, and uh, it runs good. It may need some some things. It just needs a little bit of love. It may need some refreshing. And I really think this could be a great vehicle for someone uh, who wants to take it on. I'll try to step out here and show you one more time, a little walk around. It's extremely windy, so it's gonna be windy. But um, I mentioned as well that, you know, we, we did the carpets here. You know, Dan, I know in his comment uh, mentioned that it was, the interior was, I don't know, filthy or something along those lines, I don't recall. Um, or poor condition, I think is what he said. Um, these carpets have all been shampooed. Uh, the windows, the glass, all of that stuff is nice. Uh, the headliner is relatively clean. Um, we are missing a couple of speaker cages in the back there. Uh, the rear seat folds up, it's down currently. Um, yeah, there's a few things here and there. Like I said, these little trim pieces by the window, I don't really know what those are for, but they're missing. Um, it's just some minor stuff, but overall, again, this is a really solid rig. I'm going to step out here in a minute, but, uh, it's, like I said, it's very windy. So just trying to be fully transparent. Want everyone to understand what you're looking at here. So, so we spent a little bit of time cleaning up the paint. It was painted on the previous ownership. I took off the side steps. I didn't love the way they looked on there. Thought it looked a little better without it, personally. Um, but it has been repainted. Uh, we kind of went through and buffed it and touched some of the spots up. Um, and it's very windy. So this is it. Uh, really nice, really clean. FZJ80 in good condition. I'm ready for a new home. If you have questions, by all means, give me a ring. Let me know. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. I thank Dan for bringing some of these things to my attention. It's a big help to know uh, some of the history of a vehicle. Like I said, I, I think I've already said this in the video numerous times, but uh, you know, the paper trail doesn't always tell the story. So you can track things down as much as possible, but it doesn't give you the full amount of info. And while Dan's comments are specific to him, he also doesn't have all of the information on this rig. Um, so I've driven you around in it. I've showed it to you fully transparent. You know, again, it's a 95 FZJ80. It's got 256,012 miles on it now. Um, it runs, it drives. It's it's a great vehicle. It's ready for you. Don't hesitate. You know, call me with any questions you might have. I'm happy to share, happy to answer. And if you need anything else for videos, photos, or anything else, let me know. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Actually, one more thing I will note is I wrote that there was a squeak in the steering. And when I first got it, there was this small squeak but I just don't hear it anymore. What you're hearing is just my hand gripping the steering wheel. But there was occasionally this small squeak that I heard that seemed like it may be coming from one of the joints. Um, what I kind of realized after talking to Dan too is maybe this thing has sat for a little longer than I thought it did. And maybe with me driving it and getting it out, which we have and uh, resolving some of the issues with it, we've just used it a little bit more and uh, gotten the things back up to snuff that you know maybe I thought uh, might need to be addressed. So. The steering squeak, I don't hear it anymore. I thought maybe it was like the clevis uh, in the steering column itself, the uh, the component that runs the steering shaft, uh, the point that runs to the steering box. I thought potentially there was just like a greasable joint in there that may need to be addressed, um, but I don't hear it anymore. No matter what I do, I don't get a squeak in the steering. It turns really nice, it steers really nice. The ride is really nice in this. Um, I don't know what else I can share. I think that's about it. But again, like I said, if you have any questions, any comments, suggestions, uh, 
things to look at. You just let me know. I'd be happy to provide it for you. I appreciate you. We'll see you soon.